So again, if you have that block, I invite you to use the block for Sukhasana. If not, that's completely okay. Let's try to find a little length in the spine. As we ground down through the sit bones, lift the chest up, draw the shoulders down away from the ears and just rest the palms of the hands on top of the knees. You can close the eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Complete breath out through the mouth. And then just close the lips. Just allow the breath to be uncontrolled, so natural, flowing in and out of the nostrils. Begin to arrive in your space. And then we will start today's practice with pranayam, a very important part of our yoga practice. Um, yoga, as most of you know, has eight limbs. Asana is just one of those limbs. Pranayama is another. And so this breath practice helps us evolve in and through the practice to the eighth limb, which is samadhi. Um, so with our breath, breath practice today, we'll keep the hands as they are on top of the knees. And we're just bringing that breath in to the, the base of the spine, into the root. And we're allowing the breath to travel up to the crown of the head, through the back of the body. And on your exhalation, the breath travels down the front of the body, back to the root. So you can begin to just observe and, and note the breath as it comes in through the root, the base of the spine, up into the back body in between the shoulder blades and up to the crown of the head and then back down. So you allow it to travel down towards the nose, the throat, the heart, the belly, the sacral and back to the root. So I just want you to flow with the breath with visualizing that energy moving in and up through the back of the body and down and out through the front of the body. Just allow the breath to purify, to bring more life into the body, more awareness, more consciousness. And if you feel like that visualization or the breath is not quite moving into parts of the body in the back or the front of the body, I want you just to center that attention in that space for a moment. Begin to note the breath is like light and expand into that light, into that space. So that can generally point to a block that we have in our energetic body. It can also highlight injury, old injury, or trauma. So just inviting you to flow with the breath, but giving more attention to the space in the body which feels a little stuck or not so fluid. It's completely normal to not be able to flow with that breath. It's easy to say, a little difficult to do. And what I find helps in my practice is to close my inner eyelids. So really, you've got the eyelids closed and then close again. So things become a little darker inside. And then you're narrowing that focus to that life force moving up through the back of the body and then down into the front of the body. And we'll just stay with that visual for a couple more minutes. Allow yourself to explore any color that arises in that light or any spaces that open with that awareness. So when we bring our awareness to any spaces within the body, 
that are causing us trouble or issues or obstructing us, we can create freedom. And I spoke about this in one of the other classes is that just with that awareness, we can create that space. So if you are suffering with injury, um, past trauma, maybe it's in the heart chakra, maybe it's your inner strength or power, your ability to be motivated. Um, I want you just to bring attention to whatever that is, whatever it is that's obstructing, whatever that is that's stopping you or um, pushing against you from moving forward. Just bring attention to it. And then you'll just slowly begin to lift the hands up off the knees. You can bring the hands parallel to the elbows. You can spread the fingers. Good. And then you'll just begin to open the arms. This is prana mudra, also known as cactus. And it's interesting, I was looking at this mudra today. There's many different prana mudras, but it's opening up to life force. So lift through the heart, lift through the sternum and then draw those elbows back a little bit more. Feel the squeeze between the shoulder blades. Good. Draw the navel in and then slightly tuck the ribs down. Good. So the, the torso is active, those arms are active. Maybe you can begin to tilt the hands up towards the sky, the elbows out towards me. So a little scoop of the elbows up. And then notice again the shoulder blades drop down the back. Good. Maybe a little fire being cultivated there in that space. And then you can begin to reach those hands up. Just note the tingling and the fingers. Bring the palms together, shift that gaze up. And then exhale, draw them back down. And we'll go for five more like that. Inhaling, reaching, lengthening through side body. And then exhaling, drawing them down, elbows in. Good, in and out, becoming aware of all of the sensation that is arising. Let's do one more in and then out, draw it out. Again, scoop those elbows under, the hands almost up towards the sky. Spread the fingers even wider. Navel stays engaged and then we'll bring, bring the elbows together, palms together, squeeze them here. Good. So pressing as firmly as you can, sitting tall, elbows in line with the shoulders, and then your neutral position with the head. So very simple pose, but yet a lot of work being done here, opening through the back of the body and continue to breathe from the base up to the crown of the head through the back and then down. We'll take one more breath in and out. We'll begin to open up the arms back to our prana mudra. And then we'll take left arm over top of right. Bind the hands, if not, you can take the elbows here. Lift the elbows up in line with the shoulders. Good, reach again through those fingers and then we'll draw those forearms forward towards me and then begin to fold forward over top of the legs. Maybe you stay here or maybe you can come down a little further. Maybe the elbows, forearms to sit towards the floor. Keep the sit bones down and you can begin to round through the back of the body, bringing that breath back into that space. And then you can begin to rise up as you release. Good, open the palms, elbows back up. And then you'll just switch the legs. Opposite leg in front. Yeah, bring the arms back together, press through the palms, the elbows, and begin to cultivate that heat in the body once again. One more breath in. 
complete breath out. Open the palms, the arms, prana mudra. And then take a bind of that right arm on, uh, opposite arm on top, that right arm on top. Very good. Squeeze, either bring the hands to the shoulders or bring the hands together, open those fingers. So same as we did before, begin to draw the forearms out towards me. So you create more space between the shoulder blades. And then you can begin to fold in and down. Maybe you pause or maybe rest the elbows towards the floor. Keep the sit bones down. And then slowly you can begin to rise back up through center. Release those arms. You can shake the fingers, the hands, the arms out. You'll make your way into a tabletop. So stacking the hands underneath, shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Relax the tops of the feet down. We'll move through a couple cat cows. So dropping the belly, lifting the chest, drawing the shoulders back. Lift that gaze up and then exhale, push down and round through the back body. Inhaling, arcing, lifting, exhaling, rounding, drawing in. Take one more inhale and then exhale. Good, inhale to neutral spine. Walk the hands out slightly, keep the fingers spread. Keep the elbows tucked in beside the, the torso as we begin to lower down to the floor. Tuck the chin and the chest down, and then inhale, we'll push back up. Lower down, inhale to push up. We'll take four more like that. If you can't come down as low, that's completely okay. Just a soft bend in the elbows and push up when you meet your edge. Three. And last one, we'll meet all the way down. Unravel, so drop the hips to the floor. Shift the hands slightly back. Come up for a baby cobra. So a very light press through the fingers, lifting through the chest, keep core engaged. And then on your next exhale, you can lower down. Adjust the hands slightly back. And then inhale, lift the shoulders back towards the heels, lift the heart, the chin up, exhale, come down. This time you can move your hands off of the mat a little or just half on the mat, half off, inhale. And then exhale. Next one, we'll press through the fingers, move them off the mat, inhale, lift. Prana mudra here, let's stay. So imagine that as we were seated. Go, continue to breathe, keep core engaged. And then exhale, lower down. Bring the hands back underneath the shoulders. Tuck those toes. Maybe you lift the knees, the thighs to hover above the floor. And on an inhale, we either push back to table or come up into plank pose. Good. Shoulders over top of wrists. Good, core is engaged whether you're in plank or table. And take that gaze down onto the floor. So we're going to come into four more yogi push-ups. Either lowering the knees or you can stay here. Lower just to a halfway if you're on the toes as you exhale. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. Inhale up, last one, exhale, lower. Inhale, drop the hips, lift the chest, cobra. Exhale, push back, child's pose. Drop the buttocks towards the heels, you can wiggle the hips side to side and begin to soften the arms. Relax the gaze, soften the head and then find stillness in child's pose. And then you can begin to gaze forward. Let's walk the hands off to the left side of the mat. 
either keeping the hands about shoulder width apart or taking right hand on top of left. Okay, drop the head down between the arms and then right hip back towards the heel. Really finding that length through right side body. From pinky finger to shoulder, from shoulder to hip. And then you can take that gaze forward, inhaling, walking the hands through center, and exhale, set up for the other side. Left hand on top as an option, head between the arms and left hip back towards the heel. back up to the top of the mat, walk the hands back, begin to rise up, tucking the toes, shifting back into downward facing dog. Take some time to move into this pose, just checking in with your alignment, begin to cultivate an ujjayi breath, allow the breath to guide you through today's practice. And find stillness in downward facing dog if you haven't already. Just relax the head, the jaw, the tongue. Shift the buttocks back, thighs back. The spine is long. Press firmly through the hands, through your foundation. And then slowly you'll begin to walk the feet towards the top of the mat. You can hang in ragdoll, take the hands to the elbows, buttocks lifted high. You can bend the knees here to find more length in the spine. And then spread the buttocks wide. Push firmly through the toes, the outer edges of the feet. And then you can begin to sway side to side. Extending one leg and then the other. And then pause through at center, release the elbows and then slowly roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, round through the upper back. Begin to draw the hips forward, navel in, standing tall, Tadasana. Reach the fingers towards the earth, spread them wide. Lift the sternum, shoulders down. And then take an inhale, reach up, gaze up, palms to meet. And then exhale, prana mudra, open those elbows out, lift the chest. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift to lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, right foot steps back. Lower that right knee. Good. Inhale, reach the hands up. Soften into that right hip flexor. Make sure knee is in line with that ankle the shoulders in line with the hips and then take that gaze up towards the pinky fingers Good. lifting through the heart lifting the belly lengthening through side body and on an exhale you'll draw those elbows down prana mudra begin to scoop those elbows up open the palms of the hands towards the sky lift through the chest shift that gaze and breathe two and one bring those arms together right arm over top of left good option to take those shoulders once again or reach through those fingers align the elbows with the shoulders maybe you need to shift the hips back a little to sustain or drop in a little bit deeper think about lifting elbows up and lift them up. <laughs> Gaze up to that thumb and breathe. Two and one. Begin to draw those elbows down and then you can release those arms. Bring them out to the corners of your mat. Drop into this left hip, maybe you splay this left knee out. Walk the hands off the mat, stay on the tented fingers if that's okay. And then bow the head in. You 
can slowly begin to walk the hands back to frame the foot, draw left knee in, left foot steps back, plank pose. Ooh. Good, and then exhale, flow through your vinyasa option, Ashtangasana as we did before. Inhale, cobra, a gentle lift of the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Two. And one. Lift the right leg up high. Inhale, reach through the toes. Three-legged dog. Exhale, draw knee in towards the nose. Round and step it forward. Drop that left knee down towards the floor. Untuck the toe if you can. Inhale, reach the arms up. Gaze back to those pinky fingers. Soften into this left hip or draw it back. Good. And then draw those elbows down back to Prana Mudra. Scoop the elbows under, palms up. And then we'll drop that left hand down to the floor. Use a block to support you if you need. Right hand reaches up, side body bend. So right hip off to the side, right hand off to the left. Shoulder back, gaze is up. Find a little more length. And then you can begin to return. Inhaling, bringing both hands up. Exhale, right hand to right hip. Left hand over to the left. If you want to take it down a little further, maybe it touches the floor. Draw left shoulder back. Lift the chin, the heart. And then exhale, left hand comes down. Both hands to frame the foot, top of the mat. Left foot steps forward, hip width apart, and fold in. Inhale to lift, to rise, to stand tall. And then exhale, Prana Mudra, elbows out. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Heart up, shoulders back. Exhale, left foot goes back. Left knee drops. Inhale, high lunge. Good. Stay here. We breathe. Think about drawing navel in. Glute is engaged. Chest is lifted. That gaze up to the pinkies. Two. And one. Draw those elbows down. Prana mudra. And then bring them together. Left arm on top of right. Opposite way. Take the shoulders if you need. Lift those elbows in line with the shoulders. And then begin to reach them up. Back it off if you need. Or come in a little deeper into that left leg. And you can begin to fold it forward on your exhale. Drop elbows down towards the floor and then release. Hands off to the left side of the mat. Right knee can splay out. Very good. Use the hands underneath you, underneath the shoulders if you need a little more support. Can be very intense, this hip opening. Maybe you reach out a little further and drop the head, bowing in. And then you slowly begin to walk those hands back to frame the foot. Right foot steps back, plank pose. Navel in and then flow through your vinyasa. Cobra or Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Urdhva Mukha, downward facing dog. Again, three breaths here to connect with that ujjayi breath, that length in the spine, length in the back of the body. Left leg will go high, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, draw knee in towards the nose, round and step it forward. Good, right knee drops to the floor, untuck the toes, reach the arms up, inhale. Good, and then exhale, Prana Mudra. We'll take right hand down to the floor, left hand reaches up, side body bend. Gaze to the fingers, open that left shoulder. 
and breathe. Find more length on your next inhalation. And then exhale, begin to come out of the pose. Inhale, reach right hand up. Exhale, left hand down to hip or to the floor. If it reaches, may not reach. Inhale, opening, shoulder back. Exhale, settling in. Take one more full breath in. And breath out. Inhale, come back up, both hands to frame the front foot, left foot steps forward, hip width apart, exhale, fold in. Inhale, to stand tall, reach out, palms to meet. Exhale, palms of the hands to heart space. Take a couple moments to recenter, to bring that awareness back into that space of the body which you feel is limiting you. Maybe that trauma, anything that is limiting your beliefs, limiting your movement. Inhale, reach the hands up, gaze up. Exhale, prana mudra. Lift through the heart, little back bend. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose. Flow through your vinyasa. Either Chaturanga, Ashtangasana, Cobra, Adva Mukha. Exhale, Adva Mukha, downward facing dog. Three breaths in. Three breaths out. Completing that exhalation, take the gaze forward, bend the knees. Exhale, uh, inhale, the gaze is forward. Exhale, we step or float it forward, top of the mat. Inhale, lift to lengthen. Exhale, to fold in. Inhale, to stand tall, reach up. Exhale, prana mudra. Inhale, reach and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Flow with your breath. Downward dog. Three breaths here. Completing that exhale, take an inhale, gaze forward, bend those knees. Exhale, step or float, top of the mat. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Inhale to stand tall, reach up. Exhale, Prana Mudra, heart open. Inhale to extend, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. One more round, inhale. Exhale, Vinyasa. Inhale. Exhale. Very nice. Take that gaze forward, bend those knees, walk the hands back a little closer to the feet. Good. Bring the feet together, the heels, toes to meet. And we're taking little kicks to the buttocks here. So they can be big, small, maybe we can stack the hips over the shoulders. Three, two, and one, step it forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Inhale to stand tall. Exhale, prana mudra. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to dive forward. Inhale, ukatasana. Good, exhale, sink the buttocks low. Stay here, begin to open the elbows. And again, scoop those elbows under, palms up towards the sky. I sit a little bit deeper. You can bring the feet together if you like. If it feels better with them hip width apart, that's okay. Let's sink a little bit deeper here. Two. And one. We'll begin to lift that right leg up in towards the chest. And then extend it back. Reach those hands back. 
ground firmly through that left foot and then drop that right foot to the floor. Let's take warrior one as we reach up, ground through that back heel and then exhale, elbows out. Good, inhale, reach it up, palms to meet. Exhale, elbows out. We'll do three more like that, in. Dropping in a little deeper into left leg. Out. One more in. Last out, elbows out. Just bring the elbows, palms towards one another. Right arm on top of left. Eagle arms. Good. Soften in a little bit more. Then reach those forearms out. And then reach elbows up. Gaze up. Take an inhale. Exhale, folding forward to the inside of that left knee. Hands towards the floor if they touch. Left hip back towards right heel. And then gaze down. Fold in a little bit deeper. Align that knee with the ankle. Two. And one. Inhale, rise back up. Moving with the breath now. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, up. Exhale, out. Down. Inhale. Last one. Exhale, down. Release the bind of the arms. Frame the foot with the hands. Begin to extend that left leg. You can just scoot this right foot forward so the heel's on the floor. Left hip back and lengthen through the spine. Inhale. As you exhale, begin to find depth as you fold into that left leg. Press through the toe to protect any hyperextending through that leg. Bowing in, breathing in. One more breath here. And then take that gaze forward, walk the hands forward underneath the shoulders, right foot next to the left, hip width apart. Inhale, stand tall. Exhale, Prana Mudra. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, Ukatasana. Wiggle the feet together if you'd like and then sit low. Elbows down, turn them up, palms up. Open to receive. Smile. <laughs> Two. And one. You'll begin to lift that left leg up, knee up in towards the chest. And then you can begin to extend it back. Turn those palms back, aeroplane those arms. Use the floor if you need. Switch that gaze down underneath you. Align that hip and foot. Good. And then slowly step it back into warrior one. Sweep the hands up. Bend into right knee, left hip forward. Exhale, elbows down, prana mudra. Let's continue with those arms. Inhale. Exhale. In, finding more depth, bending that knee on your exhale. In. Last one, in, reach up. Exhale, draw them down. Elbows, hands towards one another, left arm on top. Good. Reach the elbows up in line with the shoulders or take the hands to the shoulders. And then that gaze up, inhaling, opening through the heart. Exhaling, folding in. We hold here. Work the hands, elbows towards the floor. That right hip back, left hip stays forward. Good. And then the body inside of that right knee. Breathe. Shift that knee. Weight forward. Two. And one. We begin to rise on the next inhale, lifting it up, pressing through right foot. Exhale, fold in. Almost over. <laughs> inhale, reach it up, open. 
exhale. Inhale. And then exhale, come down. Unravel the arms, frame that foot. Begin to straighten that right leg. Whew. Left leg can come in, drop that heel to the floor. Right hip back, left hip forward. So the feet should be about hip width apart. Take inhale to lengthen through the spine. Exhale to fold over that right leg. Press through the toe, adjust the hands, use any props that you need. One more breath in, complete steady breath out. Inhale, begin to walk those hands forward, left foot steps forward and fold. Good, you can sway a little side to side here, to the right, to the left. And so work out through those feet, those legs. Allow sensation to shift with your awareness. And then you'll come back through center. You'll seat the hands up on an inhale, reach the palms up, hands to meet, and exhale, palms of the hands to heart space. Take some time to recenter your attention into intention. We'll come back into Ukitasana. So sweeping the hands along the floor, inhaling, sweeping them up. Bring the feet together. Drop the buttocks down low. Navel stays engaged. And we'll take eagle legs. So right leg comes on top, right knee comes up and then on top of left. If you can, maybe you can bind that foot. If not, that's okay. Draw the arms down Prana Mudra and then begin to draw them to and then begin to sit low. So buttocks goes back, align the elbows with the knees and you can begin to fold them in, only if that's available for you. Good. If you fall out, you can come back in. Three, two, and one. You can begin to unlace the legs as you rise up. Take that right leg back behind you, warrior three, extend through those fingers, elbows, and then release the bind. Come into your Ardra Trandrasana, take the block if you have one, extend right heel in line with that hip, right arm reaches up. Good, I know it burns. Let's reach through those fingertips. Stand tall and grounded through left leg. Good. and then sweep that right hand down towards the floor. Both hands can come to the floor, right knee comes in behind that left knee. Lower it down towards the calf muscle, the ankle, the Achilles. Good, and then you'll extend it back. Sweep the hands up, warrior two. Good. Inhale, reverse the worry, you can extend that front leg. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse with extended leg. Exhale, two. Releasing that left leg as we continue. For one more in. And then out, we'll hold here. Soften the hips, knee on top of the ankle. Push through this right foot and soften the shoulders. Breathe for three, two, and one. Bring both arms down, left arm on top of right. Lift, lengthen that left foot, turn it in. Both heels in, toes out, sit into goddess pose. Very nice. Sit but it's a little deeper so it's in line with the knees. Elbows up again in line with the shoulders. 
and then we can begin to fold forward. From here you can extend the legs, heels back out and fold here in our wide leg forward fold. On your next inhalation, you'll unravel the arms. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, lift through the spine. Walk the hands back to that top foot. Good. Drop that left hip down. Walk those hands back off to the side. Corner of the mat, last one. Drop that knee if you need. Three, two, and one. Bring those hands back to frame the foot. Right foot steps forward next to the left and then fold in. Inhale to stand tall, reach up. Exhale, palms of the hands to heart space. Shake out the legs if you'd like, if you need. So from the top of the mat, come back to Ukatasana. Sweep the hands along the floor. Inhale. Exhale, lower in. Prana mudra, elbows out. Good. Let's draw that left knee up. Take it over top of that right leg. Bind that foot if you can. If not, that's okay. Squeeze the inner thighs. Bring palms, elbows together. Right arm on top of left. Very good. Begin to fold in. Elbows in line with the knees. Shift your gaze, your focus. Breathe into the back of the body for three. Two. One, begin to rise up, unbind that left leg, shoot it back, warrior three, soft bend in that right leg, drop that left hip to the outer corner, and then right hands unravel, come into your half moon, right hand to the block or floor, open that left hip. Good, press through those toes, allow that sensation to shift. Flexing the foot, heel in line with the hip, left arm reaches up. Reach through those fingers. Maybe you shift that gaze from down to up. And then release, left hand comes down to the floor underneath the shoulders, left knee behind, right calf muscle, slide it down to the Achilles, good. And then step it back. Warrior two, sweep the hands up, adjust, soften in, good. Inhale, reverse trikonasana, so straighten that front leg, exhale, in. Inhale, exhale, in, and then out. One more, and then pause. Again, check in with your alignment. The three, gazing forward, two, and one. Bring those arms together, left arm over right, turn that right foot in, turn those heels in, goddess. It will take just 10 pulses to finish that nasty, this nasty, delicious pose. Let's shift the way we think about this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, release those arms, lift it up, turn those heels out, and then fold in. Crown of the head towards the floor. Reach the hands back in between the legs. You can wiggle the hips a little side to side. And then begin to walk those hands back out underneath the shoulders. Walk the hands back to the front corner of the mat. Drop that right hip down, reach those hands down. So that foot is turned in, left heel in, left foot in. Drop that gaze option to drop that back knee if you'd like.
for two. And one. Good. Walk those hands back to frame that foot. It's time right foot steps back. Plank pose. And then slowly you'll lower down all the way to the floor. Good. You'll bring the arms out to a T in line with the shoulders. The cheek rests down on the floor. Left hand will come in underneath that shoulder. Elbow tucks in. Left foot up towards the buttocks. And then we'll begin to push over foot to the outside of the right. You can either stay here with this left hand on the floor or you can reach it up and bind behind the back. And then you'll slowly begin to make your way back through center, unbinding, bringing the hand back down to support you. Lengthen the leg, bring both arms back out to a T. Take the gaze over to the right arm, right hand draws in, right knee bends, and then over to the left. Press through the palm of the hand, maybe take that right hand up, maybe it binds behind the back. Rest the head and breathe. Slowly begin to unravel. Returning back through center. And then bringing those hands, elbows into Pranamudra, elbows in line with the shoulders. We'll repeat what we've just done, but with this position of the arms. So it's gonna be a little more intense for sure. We'll bring that left arm in. If it doesn't feel right, you can do another um, as we did before with that arm straight. We'll begin to bend that left knee in and then over. Maybe it doesn't even touch the floor here to feel something in that right shoulder, the pec muscle. And see where you can relax a little. So we're just countering what we've done with all of those eagle arms through the back of the body, now opening through the front of the body. And then we can begin to roll back. Extending leg, come back, left elbow in line with the shoulder. Right hand presses down, right knee bends in, and then we come to the other side. slowly begin to make your way back. Elbows in line with the shoulders. Good. We're going to lift the chest up, elbows up and the tops of the feet up. We'll draw the elbows back beside the torso and then reach them forward, inhaling and then exhaling, drawing them back. Inhale. Exhale, keep those legs lifted, core engaged in. You can take very mini movement here if you'd like a little bit more lift up a little higher. Three, two, and then one. Draw the elbows out, lift, lift, lift. Drop the palms of the hands, push up, drop the knees. Push back into wide leg child's pose. Buttocks back to the heels. Settle and breathe. Again, just wiggling to release that lower back. And then you can begin to rise up, come back to a downward facing dog. 
right leg will go high, extend it long, open up the hip on your exhale, bend the knee, see where you can soften a little into the left heel, drop right shoulder, and then take one circle with that knee, opening, then extend three-legged dog, inhale, exhale, knee in towards the nose, hold, lift it up a little higher if you need, drop this back knee if you need, good, three, two, one, drop chin, knee down, pigeon pose. This one's going to be a little different, so we'll find our legs here first. Good. Then we're going to take those arms out and give ourselves a big hug. So we're wrapping the hands around the scapula here. And then we are moving forward. If you need to release this, if it's too much, you can. Or maybe you can just stick the elbows into the floor. If you can get the elbows to the floor, we open the arms. And then we begin to draw them in. So we're folding with the arms bound and working with those glutes as well. If you would like a little bit more, keep reaching the hands off to the side. Just be here for five breaths. And then little by little you begin to make your way out of the pose maybe lifting yourself up opening hitting that little back bend and then bring the hands down framing the leg we'll take it back three-legged dog inhale open the hip up shake out the leg and then exhale drop it down next to the left left leg goes high three-legged dog inhale exhale draw knee in hold round through the upper back bring that breath back into the back of the body up to the crown and the out breath down into the root down the front of the body two one set it up pigeon pose extend that right leg good begin to support sit yourself up open arms Give yourself a hug, opposite arm on top. Right arm on top, left arm underneath, there we go. And you can begin to fold down, slowly. Bring the elbows to the floor, or from there, take this bind, and then extend those arms out, elbows in. Rest the chin, the throat, maybe the head. Keep hips squared. And then slowly you'll begin to make your way out of the pose, however that looks. You'll rise back up, maybe you open the arms, lift the chest, the throat, and then bring those hands down. Left leg goes back, three-legged dog, inhale, shake out that leg, exhale, drop it down. We'll come back together with the feet together, heels to meet and we'll gaze forward. Bend the knees deeply, buttocks lifted high. We'll take a little hop to seat, crossing the legs at the top. Okay. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. For Bhattakanasana, we'll interlace the hands, wrap them around the tops of the feet, the bottoms of the feet. Draw the heels in as close as you can, find length through the spine. If you need to sit on a block here to prevent rounding here, please do. So we'll begin to lift the chest, to the chin up, gaze up, and then begin to draw forward. So we have a flat back here. So without rounding, we're drawing the chest forward. 
and you should be, begin to feel this in the lats, the side body, in the traps, from the ears to the shoulders. Just begin to explore the sensation also through the adductors, the hips, primarily. <laughs> And then slowly you'll begin to release. Draw the knees together. You can give yourself a big squeeze, this time rounding through the back body. Tuck the chin in, navel in. And then we'll begin to shuffle forward if you're not already towards the very top of the mat. We'll come into an avasana. Boat pose a little different this time. We'll take the hands back, bent elbows. Good, and extend those legs up. So see where you can find long, straight legs with the support of the hands. And we'll drop one heel towards the floor to hover, and then lift it up, opposite heel down, to hover up, and continue to alternate. Of course, if this is too much for the lower back, bend the knees. If it's too much for the core, keep going. Three, two, finishing on that left side. One, draw it up, begin to lower down onto the back. Keep the legs lifted. If you have the block within reach here, take it, place it underneath the sit bones. This is going to help you keep the legs extended for a longer time. If you have the wall, you can also bring those legs up against the wall. Good. So if you have the block underneath, it should be, the corner of the block should be pressing into the lumbar spine. The buttocks is actually lifted from the block. That's what's going to help keep drawing that weight forward. So the legs are just hanging here without too much stress. Good, you can relax the palms open, tuck the chin in, and just take some time here to rest, to cool down, for the breath to lengthen. And if you would like from here, you can begin to bend the knees and just allow the knees to hang into the chest. Maybe the heels just soften towards the buttocks. So a very relaxed, restorative pose. You can choose if you continue to extend the legs long, that's completely welcome. Last few breaths to rest and digest the practice to what may have arisen for you. And then just slowly you'll begin to drop the soles of the feet to the floor, keeping the knees bent. If the block's okay where it is, or that cushion, you can stay there, adjust it if you need, and then just extend those legs out. So the buttocks is supported here, lower back supported. You can bring the hands on top of the hip flexors. Maybe you just, if, if it's too much for lower back, keep the knees bent. And then your own time, you'll move into Shavasana. 
If you'd like to stay in that position for a little longer, please do. Using any blocks, props, pillows to support you. Completely relaxing, letting go of any control, any thoughts. Continuing to let go of any areas in the body which you feel stuck, any conditions, any beliefs in which are holding you back. Allowing the prana and the light of the mudra to cleanse and clear, to make the way 